Hey, welcome to the Perfect Provisional Seminar. My name is Jethro L. Bennett. I'm a highly skilled patent writing inventor and designer, and my mission in this seminar is very, very simple. I'm here to give you the power to write your own provisional and get patent pending status on your idea, on your inventions for 12 months internationally so that you can hopefully disclose your idea, maybe take it to market, develop it further, and just give you the breathing space you need when you get patent pending. In a second, you're going to see the template for the introduction which is pretty much going to write the introduction of your provisional for you. But before we take a look at that, I want you to see this invention. And this is a very basic invention, a theoretical invention, we're not really trying to patent it, but it acts as a tool to help you understand how this works. All it is is a spoon that has a movable back part that allows you to interchange between storing fluid and food in the spoon and then releasing the fluid out of the spoon. You're going to see me build a provisional of this theoretical invention. You're going to see the template appear in front of your eyes. We're going to build it together. And at the end of the seminar, you're going to have a chance to use the Shine Enterprise patent pending filing videos where you're going to see me file my application online via the USPTO online system. You're not even going to have to use the post. You can literally open up a screen of your computer and copy exactly what I do. So we've got two things going on here. The perfect provisional seminar, which is going to give you the power to write your own provisional. And straight away after that, we got the filing videos so you can take that application and file it online. What's it going to end up with? You can have an official patent application number and patent pending status for 12 months on your idea or your invention. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we start off with with your provisional or with any application is an invention title. And this is pretty simple. You've probably got an idea in your head of what your invention is. And um, it's probably a pretty broad title, hopefully not too long. So the first thing to bear in mind with the title, um, just a, a few little kind of helpers, is make sure it's broad enough. So to give an example, imagine if you or, or someone had invented a new pad for a shoe. Let's say it was for sports shoes and it made running more comfortable. So it had a special type of technology in it, some kind of woven fabric inside this insole of a shoe, and it is an improvement to sports shoes. Well, you might be tempted to call it sports shoe pad. And that would be a, a you know easily a good enough invention title. That would be a good title. But you've got to think just for a second before you do that, think about whether your invention can be used for any other area or whether it can be used in a more broad way. So for instance, that invention, the inventor might be thinking it's particularly useful for a sports shoe, but maybe it could be used for boots. Maybe it could be used for regular shoes for people that have back problems. And so maybe it's not limited to sports shoes. So instead of giving it the title sports shoe pad, we can just call it shoe pad, right? It really can be that simple at this point, especially with a provisional. Also, keep it basic. If you're starting to think, oh, maybe I should call it this complex name, which describes this inventive thing that I've got. No, you don't need to do that in the title. In fact, a lot of patent offices ask that you don't do that. They want quite a short basic title. So to give you an example, my invention Dish Shine, which was a very low lying shoe clean device, which used this kind of special configuration of a motor and a kind of, uh, you know, gearing solution. Its title was just shoe cleaning device, right? So try to keep it simple and basic. Do not use the title to explain the inventive aspect as a general rule. Just give it the broad term. So for that shoe example, we're not going to call it a, you know, special fabric, interwoven fabric for making shoes more comfortable, etc. We're just going to call it shoe pad. Okay, the second line of your application is really, really simple. It's called the field of invention. It's not absolutely essential, um, but it's, I think it's good to have it in there. And all you're going to do is really just say what your invention relates to, kind of what field it's in. And this might actually be exactly the same as the invention title. So we just gave the example of an invention which is a shoe pad. Or you might just say the present invention relates to a shoe pad. Um, or you might say it relates to an improvement on shoe pads for making shoes more comfortable right? That, even that's going quite long. So just very, very simple. And what we've got here is our first pink link. And the pink links on the perfect provisional template are links that can go straight in, all right? These are universal links, which you can use for any invention at all, because they're kind of the just little kind of uh, blocks, building blocks of your application, right? They don't s say specifically what your invention is, but you can use them. So 
Um, in this case, we've got the present invention relates to a kitchen utensil device. All right, I could have gone further and said the present invention relates to a kitchen utensil device for storing and draining fluid. And as we're going to see with the invention, the inventive aspect is this ability to interchange between storing and draining fluid in the spoon. So the best way of thinking of this line is just a really basic um, way for you to, you know, for instance, if an examiner was to look at this, which is not actually going to happen with a provisional, but if anyone was to read this in the future, if it's published, they can just get a very quick understanding of your, what your invention is. And the reason why we include this line on top of the title is sometimes the invention title doesn't give a, a kind of perfect idea of what the invention is, or it might be very, very broad. So this might be a line where you just, um, either you just say the present invention relates to and you repeat the invention title, or if you want to give a tiny bit of added information about what it is, you can do that here. Once we've done that, we move on to a slightly more exciting part of the application, which is where we're really going to see what your invention does. And the way we do that is we talk about the problems first. So rather than just talking about your invention straight away, we kind of set the scene. We go into the background of what this problem or these problems are that your invention is providing a solution for. In order to get a patent, your invention has to provide a solution. That's kind of a definition of an invention, and that's one of the main uh, the main aspects. So what we're going to do is, is just go into the problem. And if you look on the template, you can see an example with this invention spoon, which is very, very simple. Um, and it will show you how to do this. So with spoon, what we've got is an invention which has a, a part on the back which, which moves and it allows someone holding the spoon to, you know, kind of dip the spoon into some soup, let's say it's got some vegetables and some fluid, and you can interchangeably kind of drain fluid or store it, right? So that's the invention, and we're going, to, uh, and that's that's what we're going to try to patent or, or try to protect in this provisional. So what we're going to do is talk about the problem. So as you can see, all I've really got is two sentences to start off with, which is the first thing, regular serving spoons store food and fluid in the head of the spoon, but do not allow for drainage of fluid. Okay, so I've just, all I've done there is just mentioned that regular spoons you can pick up, you know, from the soup, you can pick up fluid and food, but you can't drain it, you know, you'd have to tip it, so there's no facility to drain it. Uh, and the next sentence, I mentioned about drainage spoons, and I say, drainage spoons drain fluid immediately from the spoon, but do not allow for transportation of fluid and food together. Right, so I very simply, just in two sentences with this invention, I've said what the whole problem is, that regular spoons don't have a drainage kind of aspect to the head, and drainage spoons have one, but unfortunately it's not up to you when you drain it, you know, it drains immediately, so you can't carry, you know, and I've used a fancy term, transportation of fluid and food together. Um, and after that I just kind of sum it up by saying presently there is no solution for interchangeably draining and storing fluid. So in just that those three sentences so simple you can see I've set the scene perfectly for our invention which is going to provide the solution to this problem. You might find that there's multiple problems okay and um, and you can put multiple problems down that's absolutely fine but the key here is that we're going to kind of go into the background and this this part um, this problem section is actually known as back the background in full patents and if you look at full patent applications you might see a header especially on American applications where nearly everyone does this where at the beginning of this section you actually see a header in bold saying background I think the best thing for you to think about this section as is problems rather than think about the background of the invention that's a bit of a woolen term isn't it what is the background of the invention no what we're really going to do here is talk about the problems or the problem that is the background setting from which your invention comes and provides the solution for okay so you've noted down the problems of uh of the field of your invention before your invention came about, which hopefully your invention is gonna solve. So obviously the next step now is to say what the solution is. And of course we've set the whole scene so that the solution is actually your invention. This part that we've got here on the template, which I've noted down as the solution, is often called summary of the invention. And this is just where you kind of describe in a sentence what's going on and again we've got one of these pink links you can just copy and paste this into your application and that pink link is the present invention seeks to provide a solution to this problem by providing and then we're just going to describe your invention so for this basic version of the template 
Don't worry about describing your invention in a very complex manner. Just again, copy that phrase, the present invention seeks to provide a solution to this problem by providing, and I put a little um, S in brackets after problem because there could be multiple problems. You can just copy and paste that as well. It's fine to use that kind of stuff in a provisional. And um, in this case, the best way to explain it is just to show what I've done with the kitchen utensil device. So all I've said is the present invention seeks to provide a solution to this problem by providing a kitchen utensil device with a movable back part that allows for interchangeable drainage and storage of fluid by a user. All right, let me just go through that in, in little parts. Um, so the first thing I've done, just one thing, when you want to, um, when there's anything you don't understand, the best thing to do in almost every case is to break it up into parts. So I'll go through that in little parts. So the invention seeks to provide a solution to this problem by providing a kitchen utensil device. This is just the title of our invention or the, the general description of our invention with a movable back part. Okay, this is where I've I've mentioned the key part. With your invention, there might be one really key thing that really sums up the whole invention, one part of your invention that's the inventive part, or it might be a collection of two or three things that work together to provide this kind of innovation for your invention. So in this sentence, if we can, we're really gonna to try to sum it up you know, by mentioning that key thing. So we've got a kitchen utensil device with a movable back part, and that movable back part is our kind of key aspect. And then I just said that allows for interchangeable drainage and storage of fluid. Okay, that's what the invention does. That's really what it's all about, isn't it? And that's how it's useful and what this back part is for. And then I say by a user. This is just quite a nice bit of information for you that when, you, when you're when you describing your invention, you might often want to say um, someone does something. Okay, you, c you can tell just by the way I say that, that it sounds unprofessional. In a patent application, you don't say someone holds the invention. You call an active person who plays a part or who uses the invention anyway or participates in it, you call that a user. So I just say interchangeable drainage and storage of fluid by a user. So let me just repeat that one last time so you can see what a quick summary of the invention is. The present invention seeks to provide a solution to this problem by providing a kitchen utensil device with a movable back part that allows for interchangeable drainage and storage of fluid by a user. You could have said that in many different ways, but you can see that kind of sums it up. Okay, so what we're going to do after that, and that, that's really pretty good, we've summed it up, but you can imagine, you know your invention very well, but someone else who's looking at this, imagine someone for the first ever time who's looking at this and hasn't even looked at your drawings yet, they might not understand what that is. What is this back part? We don't really understand. So what we do is we do what I call a basic description of how it works. Okay, we're, in this next sentence, and it might literally just be one or two sentences, might just be one. We're just going to mention only the essential aspects of the invention, of your invention, and we're just going to kind of back up that last little summary sentence we just had, which kind of explained it, just to kind of flesh it out so it's more understandable what's going on. So let me just read this through first. Okay, so we got down for the kitchen utensil device on the basic description of how it works. We've got the head of the kitchen utensil has holes in the head for drainage. Okay, so that's just describing that obviously there are holes in the head of the spoon for drainage. The movable back part also has holes, which, when aligned with the holes in the head, allow for drainage of fluid from the head of the utensil. Okay, so we're just describing there that when the holes in the in the back part are aligned with the hole in the head, obviously then fluid from the head of the spoon can just fall straight through those aligned holes and just fall out of the spoon. Okay, next part, when the holes are not aligned, fluid is stored in the head of the device. That's just obviously explaining that when we shut those holes, fluid is contained. Right, so in just two sentences there, we've completely explained the whole concept. Okay, so in this part, we're only going to mention essential aspects. Don't mention your kind of preferred version. You might have different versions of your invention. You can see that I've only mentioned in those sentences really essential parts. I mean, can this invention work without holes being aligned and, and kind of shut in the head? Of course not. That's the whole point of the invention. So that's what we're focusing on here. And now that we've described your invention and the kind of essential thing that your invention is, 
if you've got anything to do with your invention, if you've got a version of your invention in your head and it's got a really important kind of part of it, and I'll give you an example in a second to, to show what I mean, a really important kind of ideal version, something that, that goes on the invention or, or how it works in an ideal version of the invention, which isn't essential, if there's anything really important like that, just to really bolster this kind of understanding of the invention, we can mention that here in the most important preferred aspects little section. Again, this could just this could be nothing, it could be one sentence, it could be three or four. So if we look at Spoon and we look at this kind of basic invention we've got here, one thing that I think is really, really important in the preferred version of the invention is this switch we've got on the top of the handle. Now, we don't need that switch. I mean, you could move that back part without any switch at all. It could just be attached to the, the bottom of the spoon or attached anywhere, and you could just, with your you know fingers or your hand, you could actually just manipulate it directly. But that switch on the top is really, really good for the invention um, because what it means is that someone can hold that spoon in their hand and their, their thumb naturally goes around where the switch is. So just from just moving their thumb, they can interchangeably drain and store fluid. So it makes the whole thing very, very intuitive. It's not essential. We know it's not essential. So we're not going to include it in that little essential part, but we're going to include it in the most important preferred aspects little section. So what I've got here, I'll just read it out, is we start with preferably. Okay, this is kind of quite important. When we mention an ideal feature, a feature which is in your ideal version of the invention, but isn't absolutely essential to the invention, the way we signify that in an application is signify to anyone reading that this is not an essential aspect of the invention, but it's something that is a kind of ideal or preferred aspect, is we just say preferably. You might also see in some applications a phrase such as in a preferred embodiment of the invention, right? Embodiment just means version of the invention. So the easiest way to do it is just start every sentence with things like this with preferably. So I'll read this out what we've got. So we've got preferably the utensil has a button type switch on the top of the handle so that fluid can be interchangeably drained and stored via movement of the switch, which moves the movable part. The intent of the switch is to make it extremely intuitive for a user to change between drainage and storage, so that the user can change between drainage and storage simply by moving the switch with a thumb. Okay, so the first sentence, I've just described what the thing is. I've just described it's a button type switch. You can see that's a really kind of general kind of... Um, description of what it is. Okay, I might call it something different. I could call it a better name, but to be honest, especially in a provisional, but in any application, this kind of would be good enough. So we got a button type switch on the top of the handle so that fluid can be interchangeably drained and stored. We're going to describe it more as we go into the application, but that's fine for now. And then the second sentence after that, I just again kind of back that up by saying why, what, what's important about that switch? Why am I mentioning this? You know, and it's because the intent of the switch is to make it extremely intuitive. So we've got this aspect here, a preferred aspect, not essential, but a preferred aspect that makes the invention function really, really well. Have you got any aspects like that of your invention as you visualize the kind of preferred version in your head that aren't essential, but could really help make this a marketable product? Those are the kind of things you might mention right here. Okay, the good news is you completed the whole of what I call the introductory section of the application. And what you've just done is not only good for a provisional, but this is really the structure of just about any application um, that you'll ever see or that you'll ever do. So congratulations, and now it's time to move on to the drawings. Before we move on to the drawings, it's also worth knowing that you've completed the first part of the perfect provisional system. The perfect provisional system is just a three-part system. We got the introduction, we got the drawings, and we got the detailed description, which is obviously the detailed description of your drawings. So you've completed a third of the application. We're now going to do drawings, and I'm going to show you some really, really simple stuff that's just going to make this really, really easy for you again. But I'm also going to add some kind of advanced little tips in here if you want to know those things as well. But before we get started, let's just get some ground rules in place for the drawings.